Hello, my name is Dr. Sanjay Govil. Uh, I'm a consultant surgeon uh, with Apollo Hospitals and my specialty is hepatobiliary surgery and liver transplantation. I work in Bangalore. Um, biliary tract malignancies are uh, increasing in incidence worldwide. They are constituted by two main groups of malignancies. One is uh, gallbladder cancer, uh, the gallbladder being an appendage to the biliary tract. Uh, and the other is what is called cholangiocarcinoma, which arises from the biliary tree itself. It may be within the liver, which is an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. It may be at the hilum of the liver, where it's called a hyla cholangiocarcinoma. And it might be outside the liver, where it's called a distal or an extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So let's talk first about gallbladder cancer, which is unfortunately extremely common uh, in North India in particular. Uh, some of the common causes for uh, gallbladder cancer uh, are as follows. The first is gallstones. Now, nobody is quite sure as to whether gallbladder uh, cancer is caused by gallstones or whether it is just an association. As you all know, gallstones are a very common condition and four out of five people who develop gallbladder cancer uh, have gallstones in association with the cancer. However, gallbladder cancer uh, occurs in only a minuscule proportion of all the patients who have gallstones. Uh, so uh, the causality is unclear, but there is certainly an association. Uh, the second uh, 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 common cause of gallbladder cancer is what is called porcelain gallbladder. Uh, where the gallbladder, the entire gallbladder wall becomes calcified or part of the gallbladder wall becomes calcified. Uh, it used to be said that one in five of pa patients who have a porcelain gallbladder will go on to, will have a cancer within it. This is probably a higher than, uh, you know, is, is an overstated number. The number is uh, is less. However, it is prudent that if you are diagnosed to have a gallbladder cancer, uh, sorry, if you're diagnosed to have a porcelain gallbladder, that you have your gallbladder removed because all said and done, there is a high association, uh, there is a high incidence of gallbladder cancer in these patients. And thirdly is gallbladder polyps. These are soft tissue nodules which may occur in the gallbladder. Uh, and if they grow in size to more than one centimeter, they can turn into a, a cancer. Uh, and uh, these are easily diagnosed on ultrasound. Uh, and if seen, it's probably again best uh, to uh, have your gallbladder removed, especially if the polyp uh, is approaching, is enlarging in size or is approaching a, a size of one centimeter. Having said all this, uh, the cause for, uh, I mean, gallbladder cancer is really speaking associated uh, with, uh, you know, some kind of a combination of genetic and environmental uh, factors. Uh, and there are regions in the world uh, and certain populations uh, uh, which are uh, very prone to gallbladder cancer and unfortunately North India, particularly along the Gangetic Plain in Eastern UP and Bihar is one of the areas with a very high risk of uh, gallbladder cancer. Uh, there really isn't anything much that you can do to prevent gallbladder cancer uh, except have your gallbladder removed. But remember to keep a perspective that gallbladder cancer occurs relatively infrequently Whereas, although gallbladder surgery is quite safe, there is a risk of causing damage uh, and developing complications following gallbladder uh, uh, surgery, uh, which is probably more likely to happen than for anyone to develop a gallbladder cancer. So please discuss this with your doctor before indiscriminately having your gallbladder removed. As I mentioned before, uh, 
cholangiocarcinomas, which are cancers arising from the bile duct itself, uh, are increasing in frequency across the world. Many of these uh, disease, the, these cancers are associated with an underlying disease such as uh, a disease called primary sclerosing cholangitis uh, or um, uh, intrahepatic Gallst intrahepatic stones. This is different from gallstones which have slipped into the bile duct, but these are stones which actually form within the bile ducts in the liver. This is something that is commonly seen or, or, or is more frequently seen uh, in the northeast of India and in Southeast Asia. And also certain types of hepatic cysts, biliary cysts, which are called colidocal cysts. Uh, these tumor, these cysts can be are associated with a high incidence of uh, conversion to cancer, and whenever possible, should be uh, operated to remove them. Um, however, diseases like primary sclerosing cholangitis require uh, something like a, a liver transplant to correct. Uh, and therefore, these patients who have something like uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis uh, or hepatolithiasis, uh, that is pr uh, primary uh, stones in the biliary tract, uh, need to be followed up carefully uh, in an effort di to, to diagnose uh, the cancer while it's still early and while some sort of treatment uh, is possible. Uh, apart from these underlying diseases, the three which I have already mentioned, there are a number of other uh, illnesses which can be associated with, uh, with cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, one of them is um, uh, the, the uh, you know, cirrhosis of the liver, which is a condition in which the liver becomes shrunken and nodular, uh, especially when the cirrhosis is associated with hepatitis B or hepatitis C. One can go on to develop cholangiocarcinoma, although this is not the most common cancer in cirrhosis. Um, uh, one can also develop a cholangiocarcinoma in a patient who's got a fatty liver. Uh, especially an older obese patient. So patients who are obese, who are diabetic, who are overweight, um, uh, who smoke and who drink uh, are at increased uh, in, uh, likelihood of developing this cancer. And uh, in order to prevent the onset of this cancer, all one can do really is uh, to avoid uh, alcohol and smoking, to eat a healthy diet, keep your weight down, exercise regularly, um, uh, don't take uh, certain medications which may contribute to the development of liver disease or fatty liver, uh, keep your cholesterol under control and your lipids under control. Um, uh, and if you uh, unfortunately have cirrhosis or have hepatitis B and hep or hepatitis C, then for hepatitis B and C, there are now good treatments available which one should start. And if you have established cirrhosis, uh, then you need to have a six monthly ultrasound uh, in, in order to, and, and, and a blood test for tumor markers in, <coughs> in order to uh, diagnose these cancers early. Thank you.